Good morning and welcome back to another special edition of Miniature Monday on a Thursday here on Gaming with ADHD. Today we are taking a look at the Intersphere Heavy Battle Lance for Battletech from Catalyst Game Labs. Now, if this is your first time here, basically what we're going to do is we're going to open up the box, take a look at the contents, and we're actually going to get some up close and detailed looks at the figures while also looking at the art that has been released for these battle mechs over the years. In many cases, these have been out for over 30 years, uh, not the figures themselves, I'm talking about the art, and so it's they, they've all had some interesting evolutions over the years. Now, before we get started, do make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. I've got uh, all of the, the boxes that I have not done yet. They're all ready, waiting for me to record. But I also have a lot of content that's already been made, and I'd love for you to check it out. But I also don't want you to miss any content that's coming out in the future because I do have some ideas on different Battletech topics that I want to cover once I've reviewed all the miniatures. So, if you like what I'm doing, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, put a comment down below. Let me know, what do you think of these mechs? Um, you know, which is your favorite? Do you like playing with them? Uh, you know, or is it just another big stompy robot and who cares because we all love big stompy robots. So with that said, let's open up the box and take a look at what we get inside. All right, so just like all of the other sets, we have our little window box. You can see the, uh, the mech combat going on in the background. And we get to see all of the mechs that are available. So in this set, we have the Bushwhacker, the Axeman, the Nightstar, and the Cataphract. So with each of the figures, they do also give you two cards for playing the game. So we'll take a quick look at these and then we will get on to looking at the art and the miniatures. So basically uh, the cards, you get a description of the pilot, uh, some background, who they are. Uh, you get a special pilot ability and then you also have a gunnery and a piloting skill. So basically a way to quickly drop the pilot into the game uh, and make the game a little a little more unique as opposed to uh, you know just generic pilots. So we have a mercenary cataphract, and then another or a house Lyle house Lau cataphract, a mercenary bushwhacker, and a Davian bushwhacker, mercenary axeman and a Steiner Axeman, ah, Adam Steiner. Uh, for those of you that are relatively new to Battletech, Adam Steiner was the star of the Battletech cartoon in the 90s. We've got a Mercenary Night Star and a Davian Night Star. So, Adam Steiner, that was a fun little Easter egg. Obviously, kind of a no-brainer for an Axeman, but you know, regardless, I like when companies do that. So these are the Alpha Strike cards for each of the mechs. Uh, if you're not familiar with Alpha Strike, it is the rules light version of the game so that you can run bigger games with lots of battle mechs. And you get one for the Night Star, the Cataphract, the Axeman, and the Bushwhacker. Each one does have two variants, so they are slightly different. I will be honest, I have not yet played Alpha Strike. Still, I know I've mentioned it in multiple videos. Uh, but, uh, yes, it is on my table to, to do, along with everything else I've got planned. So, that is what you get out of the box. So, with that said, let's dig in and start looking 
at the miniatures themselves. So the first one that we're going to look at is the 95 ton Nightstar. Now, this appeared in Tech Readout 3058, and it is um, obviously a bit of an upgrade from the original piece of art. Now, the original art, I don't mind. This one's not bad. It's very reminiscent of the era, uh, but it does look a little rough. It does have that... Uh, we'll call it uh, infantryman's perspective where you're looking up at it. Uh, yeah, so it's got some weird you know, perspective forcing on it. Uh, you know, it does have a hand over here, bunch of you know, big heavy weapons. Uh, obviously, it looks like it's going to hurt you. Now, there haven't been a lot of redesigns for the Nightstar. In fact, um, outside of the collectible card game, this was pretty much the only piece of art until uh, we got the Ill Clan redesign. Now, this is the current Nightstar and the one that was based on the miniature was based off of. Um, I I am not as big a fan of the art because it's still got that infantryman's perspective. But I have to say, I absolutely like the miniature. It's got sort of that marauder styling to it, but it looks like a beast, and it looks like it's gonna hurt you. It looks like it can take damage as well as dish it out. So, uh, honestly, I really like this. Uh, I've known about the Night Star, but I have not honestly looked into it much over the years. But I really want to get this on the table and see what it can do. I will be honest, I love Assault Class mechs. I shouldn't, but, you know, who cares? Give me a whole bunch of big, smashy robots and let me try and just get that one lucky shot on your Locust. Um, I don't care. This looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to do that. So... There is the Night Star. Now, the next one is the Cataphract, first making an appearance in Tech Readout 3050 and weighing in at 70 tons. Now, I gotta say, looking at the miniature and the original piece of art, this hasn't changed very much. Obviously, the the miniatures cleaned up a little bit. But this original piece of art from 3050, this is really good as far as uh, a base. You don't seem to see that very often. Most of the mechs that have been ported over to Ill Clan seem to have gotten pretty significant redesigns. And this one very much is staying true to its past. So we got this version in 3050 upgrade, still kind of maintaining uh, the look. You've got kind of this uh, egg-shaped cockpit area here. Uh, you've got the arm with the... This I actually, I'm, I'm mostly pointing it out because you can actually see it on the miniature. So the fact that it's it's quite visible here. Uh, the legs look a bit smoother even than the original piece of art. Um, yeah, this one definitely looks like uh, more like armor plates than the 3050 upgrade. Uh, but then we got this version in 3039. Not as big a fan of this one, although it looks pretty consistent with the 3050 upgrade. But then we get this version in Ill Clan. So uh, honestly, it's it's a better piece of art. You know, I've said it before in many of my videos. I think the art has gotten better. But even the previous versions, I think they were still good. Uh, you know, still kind of showed off this seventy ton mech. Uh, you know, you've got the I believe that's an auto cannon there in the torso. Uh, and the laser and probably auto cannon there in the arm. I'm sorry I did not memorize all of the weapons for these mechs before recording the video. Um, but regardless, 
uh, it very it did very well at keeping the the classic look and styling, uh, but definitely getting it modernized, nice armor plates, uh, and a good piece of art. So, not necessarily you know my favorite. Uh, I'm still digging that Night Star, but it's a good mech. All right, now coming in number three, not in order of. Uh, preference just in order uh, I, honestly if you were curious uh, I am doing them in the order that they are listed on the back of the package but in this case we've got the Axeman now this is the successor to the Hatchet Man uh, it is a 65 ton mech and one of the very distinctive styling things about this mech was its cockpit now, the head there, when a pilot needs to eject, the entire head actually lifts off and basically turns into a paraglider to get the pilot farther away from the battlefield. So it very much gives it a distinct look and a distinct style that on even on the current mech, it definitely looks like they've maintained that. Um, you know, you can see kind of these tail fins here uh, on the back. Now, in this case, it's got a missile pod on its shoulder and then some laser weapons. Uh, this original piece of art, uh, I like it. It's a good piece of art, uh, but it's also got some design quirks. The legs look a little spindly. The body looks uh, a bit extra massive. And the hat, the or the axe, looks a little dainty. But um, you know, as we move into 3050 upgrade, it definitely seems like an improvement. Now, over here on the right shoulder, we've definitely got more of the auto cannon look to the weapon systems that we have on the current miniature. But again, we've got that you know. Uh, that that glider vehicle you know head and cockpit and then we move into this one for ill clan so i like the redesign of the axe the axe looks uh, a little better the only issue i have with the axe is it looks a little small um for a mech this size for the bulk that they've got in the torso uh, I would like to see an axe that just looks like it's going to do a bit more damage. Um, you know, overall, not bad. I like uh, I like the art. They've kept the feel and the look to it. Uh, they've maintained that very, very distinctive head slash cockpit look to it. And, you know, overall, you know, it's a classic. Um I wish it would be. I wish it was a little better as far as the art. Um, I will admit I am also not an artist, so I don't know exactly where I would like to see improvements. Um, the torso does look a little extra, extra thick, um, so maybe tone that down a little bit. Um, but regardless, it's you know it's still a good piece of art, and it's still got that distinctive uh, head and uh, axe. So, overall, good miniature. Um, not necessarily the best on this one. All right. And our last and, you know, probably going to be my second favorite out of this set um, is the Bushwhacker. Now, the original appearance of the Bushwhacker was in uh, the Battletech Compendium uh the rules of warfare and you know it's this piece of art um i actually really like this one it's uh you know it's got that classic 90s you know just black and white uh, i don't want to call it sketch art but you know the fact that they you know they had black and they had white that's all they could do to color the the images um i really really like the look of this one now the bushwhacker uh, was the cover star or, or the the cover mech for Tech Readout 3058. That was the first Tech Readout appearance of this mech. 
Uh, it weighs in at 55 tons, and honestly, I absolutely love this cover. Uh, the Bushwhacker featured pretty predominantly in the MechWarrior 3 video game, which is my personal favorite of the series, and uh, and I really like the look on this one. They, I think they get the proportions right. Uh, you know, the scale looks good. Uh, overall, you know, this this is how I envision this mech. Now, I point that out because this is the piece of art that we got inside the tech readout. Uh, again, back to the infantryman's perspective. I'm not sure what the uh, the the developer's fascination is with the infantryman's perspective. Uh, it throws everything off, makes it look a little strange. Uh, these arms, you know, are kind of odd because they look like they're coming straight out of the body instead of, you know, uh, hanging down like normal arms um, so they can be positioned a, a bit better. But regardless, this one looks big and mean, even if it's got some weird perspectives on it. Now, this is the Ill Clan version of the mech. And honestly, I like this redesign. I think this gets a lot closer to the uh, the 3058 cover, and uh, you know it looks more reasonable. Um, you know, I I I, I like I've just I just like the design of the Bushwhacker. Uh, I'll admit I'm kind of partial to the chicken uh, the chicken walkers. Um, but overall, I think uh, I think they captured this one uh, really well and then converted it into a miniature, uh, you know, really well as uh, you know. Also, so uh, overall, um, I I'm really happy with this set. I'm gonna have fun with all of these. These are the kinds of mechs that I like to put on the table, even if they are not necessarily the uh, tactically correct choice. But regardless, you know, I, I'm, I'm really happy with this set. I think they did really well with this one. So, what do you think? You know, am I wrong on my opinions? Um, you know, feel free to comment down below and, you know, call me out on it. But other than that, what's your favorite? Which one do you, are you looking forward to getting on the table out of the Inner Sphere Heavy Battle Lance? Regardless... Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate that you decided to come and check this out. It, um, and we will talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.